Hello, hello, everyone. I am actually out learning about all the latest trends in home electronics at Beacons, but I would have missed you guys too much had I not been able to come here and at least record our kind of time that we normally have together that's live. And we have been going for, oh my goodness, almost six full weeks of time together where I've gotten to know a little bit more about you. You've gotten to know more about me and Luca Haven and what it means to be a purpose interior, purpose-driven interior design company. And then we dove into so many tips around our home. We have been through kid-friendly tips and how do you create a home that is both a haven and a refuge for you as well as your kiddos. And then we have dove into looking at what makes a welcoming home. How can we use intention, mission, and connection to make a welcoming space, both in the downstairs and this week we were headed to the upstairs. And we've talked about master bathrooms, master bedrooms, even the kids' bathroom. And today we're going to cover what makes a welcoming and life-giving home office. I'm excited to bring this to you. As I mentioned in our previous video, this is a chance where I get to nerd out on some engineering concepts um, coming from working within the office furniture industry. I um, have loved creating products for it, and I'm happy that it can carry over into the design world. So that's what we're going to cover today is how do you create a life-giving, more welcoming home office for you and anyone that you welcome in. And we're going to start the same place we always do, and that is what? That is an empathy exercise, so that way we can understand our intentions for the space. So really taking a mindful moment to step back, and how does your current home office make you feel, and how do you want it to make you feel? And one of the things I want you to really pay attention to in this exercise is throughout the day, what activities are you doing? What are your thoughts about those activities? And then at the end of the day, how does your body feel? Do you have any aching neck or lower back pain? You know, do you constantly feel like you have to do the stretching? That is a very significant clue that you may not have your ergonomics set up correctly for your home office. And what is ergonomics in the first place? Ergonomics is how your body is positioned in doing a task. That's the really easy version of it. So the first place I want you to look is the ergonomics of your office. So some of the key um, measurements here is the first one is your chair. Make sure that when your chair is in its position, that your feet are flat on the floor and that your knee is making about a 90 degree angle, maybe only slightly more than that. But you really wanna target that 90 degree when your feet are flat on the floor. And that will help your hips and your legs not to fall asleep. And then when you're seated in that, seated in that position, Put your arms or your fingers on your keyboard and take a look. Is your elbow at a 90, de 90 degree um, angle or is it up high? A lot of the times we put our tablets or our um, laptops on top of a desk and normally that's too high for us. Where, are, where is your keyboard in relation to your elbow position? because you wanna make sure it's 90 degrees. And then with your fingers on the keyboard, how is your wrist? Is it in a neutral position? That will help, you know, just as your tension is going up to your arms, it'll really help make your arms in a comfortable position. And then finally, when it comes to neck, what is normally happening with your neck is that your monitor is too low. So when you are looking at your monitor, you really want your eye level to be at the top of the monitor screen. 
So take a profile picture. Where is your neck? Is it always looking down? And that's what's causing a lot of tension is you, are you too high? And that's also creating a lot of tension in this neck region. So take a look. Those are the three main places to look. There are others if you want to dive deeper, but those are the main ones. And then making sure that you have a chair that, you know, every once in a while you can just stretch in, that you can like lean back and stretch in your chair. Getting a good chair is key. And I know that it is not one of those fun expenses to, to have. Um, I, I personally have a human scale chair, um, because I, I actually was a project manager for a human scale product that just released called the path chair. Check it out. I just love their products because there isn't too much adjustment that I have to worry about. And they have, a you know, a tilting mechanism that just goes with your body and really mimics it. So you don't have to adjust the, you know, the tilt of, of the chair. Um, I know by no means get a kickback. That used to be my former life of project managing engineering projects. Um, but it was a fun one to work on and to really understand the testing that chairs have to go through and how important the ergonomics really are. And then if your monitor is too low or too high, there's also monitor stands that can adjust. So whether you want to sit or even stand, there is a monitor stand that will help you go at whatever level you want that can be adjustable. And then your keyboard, making sure you have, if you need it, if your arms are too closed off of an angle and they're up like this, get a keyboard, um, a rack that you can, you know, have your uh, hands in a more comfortable position. Now that was a lot of, like I said, engineering type with your home office. But those tips will create a home office that is better for your body, that you're not aching all the time. And if your eyes are getting tired, think about getting, you know, blue screen glasses just to really help with your eyesight as well. Um, and try to not have a cluttered desktop screen even. I really like to keep it clear and not too many tabs open, at least on my tablet. My husband will tell you my phone may be a different story, but I really try to minimize how many things I have open on my computer because if I see down below all these things open, it really is just, it, it like gets you all stressed out and overwhelmed and it clutters the brain. So a lot of times we think about the clutter around us but really think about the clutter on your desktop and how many apps you have open at one time that you're working on. It'll help free up your mind if you can close some of those and come back to them. And then going on from here, I have st stood on my soapbox probably long enough. If you have any further questions about ergonomics, please email me. I would love to answer all that I can um, from the engineering perspective and why even chairs cost so much, but why they are so important in your home office, especially if you are there often. If that's your home base now that you're working from home, you want to make sure it's a place that's comfortable. The next tip I have for you for your home office is think about, this is a new one, <laughs> think about how your video looks when you are set up for your Zoom calls. With so much virtual um, meetings now, this is something that's new to think about. Um, you know, in this instance, my video is not set up correctly. You know, we're working on creating an office for me by moving kids around. And so we're just not done with that yet. But by the end of the summer, we should be. And so think about the lighting. If you have a window, think about placing it in front of, of you if you're able to. That way the light reflects on you and brightens up your face. Don't ever have a window like straight behind you because it'll create a shadow. And then think about the wall behind you. Is there some inspiring art that you could have up? Um, trying to make sure that there's not too much clutter behind you uh, because people will get distracted by that and not really listen to what you're saying. So think about what is 
on that video screen and then how to really brighten up your face. Um, then making sure that you have the, the proper technology. Like I said, if you need a light to brighten up your face, if you need an added microphone or noise canceling headphones or, or mic even, if you all of a sudden will have a screaming kid you know of, try to get one of those noise canceling so that the background noise doesn't distract people too much. A lot of things like Zoom have this built in Make sure you have it turned on because it can be turned off, uh, but it just creates a better um, meeting feel that people can focus on you if you're talking and they can hear you properly and aren't being distracted with what's going on around you. So really think about how does it look when you are on a Zoom meeting. Um, so we've gone through ergonomics and setting up your office. The, the next tip is to um, you know, kind of think about those activities. Maybe you make coffee regularly available to you. I have a Keurig right next to me. I enjoy an afternoon cup of coffee and I don't wanna necessarily go downstairs and distract the kids in what they're doing. So I brought up the coffee for me and I have a little coffee station right next to my office. But do you maybe need a couple chairs next to the window? when you want to take breaks, because if you set a timer for breaks, like every hour, taking a little tiny break, stretching your legs and just getting a different view, it really opens up your mind. So where can you take that quick little break in your home office? Think about adding a chair, even getting up to get that cup of coffee, make that cup of coffee within your own space is something to consider um, with how you use it. So take a look. How, what do you like to do during those little mini breaks? Because you're going to need them to stretch out your legs and to stretch your mind a little bit further. Um, then the next, make sure it's a place of creativity. No matter what you're doing in that home office, it takes creativity. Even when I was a project manager and it was very heavy process focused, there still took creativity. Whether it was to help the team uh, with a solution on the prototype that they were having, or it was coming up with a solution of how can I help the team feel more engaged? Graphically, how can I make the project come to life and the timeline come to life? I know this may be boring to a lot of people. I love process. And that was my way to be creative when I was in that role. Now, heavy creative focused, I needed a space that allows my mind to wander, to be inspired in order to create beautiful spaces that have intention and meaning behind them. But any job you do, whether it's process focused or even the mundane, if you have an office, there is room for creativity and you will find more joy in your home office. So think about you know, what inspires you. Is there a certain type of art that inspires you? A certain color palette that you just love? Is it maybe having a window or a plant that you can just take time to notice the intricate details of each leaf that was designed and created? That in and of itself, to think about the life of that plant brings inspiration. <laughs> At least to me it does. I may love the woods uh, a little too much, but that is what inspires me is those intricate details. Maybe it's um, having a wood desk and, and seeing the, the rings of the tree or the different imprints on the tree made from, you know, different insects or, you know, maybe you do an epoxy one and it just has these lines that are soothing to you, can bring in a different color. Um, is it having st strategy books on your bookshelf ready to grab? and flip through real quick because you've highlighted the, the highlights of them. And you're simply inspired by a book that you can just pick up and flip through. Are you inspired by you know a blank whiteboard? Think about maybe you have a whole wall that's a whiteboard, or maybe you have one um, that is um, more like see-through glass, that has standouts. And so that way you can have the color of your wall behind it. 
and have whiteboard markers right there. So you can just start sketching, start brain dumping, start doing whatever you need for whatever you're working on to just open up your mind further and have almost like this endless space for you. Um, you know, making sure that your desk is cluttered free and that you have enough storage for the stuff that you need. Um, I love to run more of a paperless office, but if you have a lot of stuff that you need, um, samples or, you know, different documents or different reports, making sure that you have a place to kind of put them away. Um, so lots of storage and functional um, storage at that. So that way you can keep your desk cluttered free and that the room can be cluttered free as well. Your mind will be a lot more open to wander, to be productive. And that's what you need in your home office. Um, other tips, if you have only a small space, they make beautiful partitions now. With, with the effect of COVID and people coming home, there's been a lot more products on the market that are simply beautiful. I've seen some wood panels, some vertical wood panels uh, that, that bring simplicity, but partition off the space really nicely. Um, but you can work with what you have. You know, what do you specifically need to get your job done? And start from there. It doesn't have to be this immaculate, huge desk, huge office space. It could possibly be a small one, especially if you can go more paperless and so that you don't need so much storage. But think about what you need and then start there. If that's what you have, make the most of it. Have it be inspiring to you of where you put it in your home. So the top tips, like I said before, what I have for you for your home office is first look at your ergonomics and make sure that those are on point and that you're taking those breaks, that you are uh, making a space that where creativity can just flow from you. So what is that for you? And then the, the final tip, making sure that whatever is on your screen in your Zoom meetings, that you have the technology, that you have the surroundings really on point so they're not distracting so people can really pay attention to what you're saying. And if you only have a small space, start thinking about partitions. It's okay to have a small space and you can make it so inspiring and so life-giving and productive for you if you just take a minute and think creatively about it. Think of possible solutions and just start writing them down. You don't need a big space to make a big impact. So that is what I have for you today. Action step being, if you have a home office, how can you make it just a little bit more inspiring for you to free your mind a little bit more? Maybe it's adding a whiteboard. Maybe it's adding just a plant or a little um, saying right by your desk. I know I have, I have one... Um, that I love that's just in the littlest frame, um, but it makes a really big impact for me. And even for clients, I've implemented their mission into their office. If they have more of a personal mission, um, like this one client, I had um, had a retreat that was very dear to her. We brought a piece of that retreat into her home office and put it right next to her her monitor so that she could always remember the growth that she had. So maybe it's an inspiring mission piece that you bring in. But I want you to take a step back and think about what is one thing I can implement in my office that can bring inspiration to my days and then add that. It's not a big task, it, but it is so life-giving. I hope you guys take time to do that. And as always, I would love to hear your additional home office tips. Comment on the video below, share them with our community. And as always, too, welcome the sharing on your feed, bringing a friend uh, next time. We are going to talk about guest rooms tomorrow. I will be live at 1 o'clock on Friday where that's what we'll talk about. And then also, if you have a question that I haven't answered yet, anything with design or who I am or my favorite kind of ice cream, please uh, message me, DM me, or answer the question box in my uh, story. Uh, Saturday, I will be answering all your questions. So we'll get through as many as we can in the time we have, but I would love to answer any questions you guys have. So make sure that you make those comments 
or send me a message so I can get to your question because I'm all about creating Luca Havens for all of us in our own homes. I look forward to being with you live tomorrow where, uh, like I said, we're going to talk about that guest room and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. See you later, friends.